Perfect. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for being here tonight. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about 2021, New Year, New You, making some um, healthy choices to be just feeling good mentally, socially, and physically in 2021. So we greatly appreciate everybody here. Please know, uh, or we appreciate everybody being here. Please know that we will probably have some others that are chiming in. And, and so if at any point you hear a beep or something of somebody joining us, um, I hope it won't be distracting, but we greatly appreciate you being here. If everybody could take a moment to just introduce themselves in the chat box, um, let us know who you are. Um, it's helpful to know also if any of you are parents or why you're here tonight or um, no pressure though. The whole idea of this workshop is about health and well-being and us working together. I think we have somebody who is um, not muted. If you wouldn't mind muting yourself, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, but let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Renee Marshall, and I've been an educator in Santa Clarita for the last 20 years. Um, before I was in Santa Clarita, I also was an educator in Northern California, and I've had the honor of being a preschool teacher, an elementary school teacher. I taught middle school, and I was also a college professor. I was a college professor at College of the Canyons for over a decade where I taught education and I taught early childhood education, and I helped people to become teachers. And so um, I've really devoted like the last 30 years of my life to education, and I love talking about um, just wellness, especially um, right now in our pandemic. We're in this totally unique time, um, and there's definitely, I, I wanna make sure that I also announce, uh, I acknowledge this isn't just an, a unique time. This is a challenging time. And so I appreciate everybody being here today. Um, thank you so much. Oh, I love it. We already have a first person in the chat box who's introduced themselves, a mother of an eighth grade boy. Um, I am the mom of ninth grade twins. So I am in it with you, my friend. <laughs> um, it is unique having um, twins in the same grade. I have a boy and a girl. They both go to Castaic High School. And um, anyways, I'm excited to talk to everybody because we're really just, you know, trying to do the best that we can, right? And, and in this situation that we're in right now. Oh, I love it. Catherine just chimed in too. Catherine's a fellow teacher as well. Excellent. Um, and I am with you. Um, kids are really challenged right now, uh, learning from home and how do we keep them healthy? And, you know, it's been a confusing time. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about some strategies, some tips. I want to encourage you to talk in the chat. If at any time you'd like to unmute and ask a question, or make a comment, please feel free to. Um, the workshop will go till about eight o'clock and then we're gonna open it up for Q&A at the end. Um, I will be here as long as you would like to stay and talk. I will also share my contact information with you after because I'd like to continue being a resource for you and your family after we're done with the workshop tonight. But thank you so much for being here, everybody. I really appreciate it. Oh, excellent, I love it. We have some more people chiming in in the chat box. That's fantastic. That's a great way for us to stay engaged. Um, it's so funny because I used to tell my kids that when they would game online or when they would, you know, text their friends and things like that, I used to not consider that social interaction. And um, in the pandemic, everything has changed, right? And our definitions of everything are really different. So it's even exciting when you see people introducing in the chat, we're, we're connecting and that's what we need to do. So let's go ahead and here we go. Tonight, our objective is we're going to be talking about techniques on how to be socially, physically, and mentally active during this challenging time. We're going to be specifically looking at a couple different domains that are really important. First of all, our social health, and that's our ability to interact with people and to have like meaningful relationships. That's one of the most challenging things right now, especially for those of you who are parents of children that are just starting school. How do you create relationships in a, in a two dimensional, you know, virtual world? So we're going to get into social health a little bit. Um, we're also going to talk a bit about social emotional health, and that's really the ability to understand your own emotions, understand your relationships, understand your reactions. Um, a lot of times when we talk about the concept of emotional regulation, that really goes under the social emotional health of a person. And how can you regulate, um, especially in times when things aren't really regular? Uh, we're also going to spend some time talking about physical well-being, and physical well-being is you know, well-being of the individual in terms of their body and really just how they function. Um, it's kind of like the mechanics, and we're going to definitely talk about the physical health. We're also going to spend some time talking about mental health and what we can do in 2021 to have solid emotional, psychological, and social well-being. So thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Before we jump into this, though, I want to acknowledge something. 
we are in an incredibly challenging time right now. Um, you know, it's things are going back and forth. We, we, you know, we get one notice one day, another notice another day, and it's really a confusing time. So I want to just say that the stress that everybody's living in right now is not what we're used to. And so if you find that you're acting differently or your children's acting differently, or maybe your partner's acting differently, um, give some grace right now because we're really um, in a time that we're, we're not used to, you know? And so, but here's the great thing, 2020 is done. We are now in 2021. This is about a new year, a new you and finding strategies to be healthy. So with that, let's keep talking. I wanna also um, talk just for a moment about some recent news that came out. I wanna make sure that this is on everybody's radar. Los Angeles County has the Roadmap to Recovery and um, this is a really great um, reference for you if you're looking for, oops, excuse me, looking for information about COVID and what's allowed and what's not allowable within Los Angeles County, for those of you that are within, within LA County. Um, but one of the things I want to take note or for everybody to take note is there has been a shift this week. And so in Los Angeles County, we've had a lifting of some of the orders. And so I actually went back and changed some of this presentation to reflect that. And one thing I wanna note is, um, G gatherings are something now that are going to be more allowable. Um, it's a tricky time though, because we also know that our ICU beds are still at you know critical numbers. And so uh, we definitely need to be cautious, but you know, this weekend it's gonna, your things are now opening up where there can be a gathering where you have up to three households and a totaling of 15 people. And so there's some new options that are coming out for us. Here's the thing though, do what's right for you, do what's right for your family, and don't take, don't accept any guilt related to it. I would, you know, I've got two teens that are in ninth grade. Guess what? If they know that they can hang out with 15 people this weekend and have three different groups of families at my house, they're gonna wanna do that. But I can also tell you that my mother who is 86 years old received her first vaccine yesterday. And our family has made a commitment until she gets her second vaccine. We're going to continue with the lockdown that we've been in because for us, you know, we've got my mom and she's 86 and we need to take, you know, we need to kind of take a, a, our own route for this roadmap. And so while I want to say that, you know, the new openings are happening and it's really a time to be excited. If you have friends or family that aren't ready yet, just let people be where they are. Part of the um, having good health in 2021 is, you know, leading with grace and kindness. And we might not understand everybody's rationale right now, but that's okay, because we're getting to a better spot. And that's all that we've been hoping for is to get to a better spot. So um, with that, let's talk a little bit about social health. I think social health is one of the most fascinating pieces of, um, but when it comes to our social health, you know, one of the biggest things right now is how do we form like meaningful relationships? And the thing that's tricky about it is it takes more effort than it used to take. It used to be that our children or our families would go to the park or they'd go, they'd be in, you know, sports, yeah, no. they'd be in school or they'd be in these different places where it was automatically a chance for us to have these social relationships and whatnot. And in a two dimensional space, it's a little bit different. And so one of the things that we need to know, though, is staying socially active will greatly benefit everybody in your family. And so right now, if you're not very social, you need to find ways to be social. And with that, here's what I want to challenge you with. Reframe what it's like for hanging out. You know, it used to be that you might have a couple people over and they're hanging out in your house and they're staying for dinner and watching a movie or maybe spending the night. Maybe hanging out now is um, that your child goes to a friend's house and they stay in the front yard in two chairs and they talk with their mask on for 30 minutes or maybe you drive through somewhere and get an ice cream and and the two people sit on the corner and they you know eat an ice cream together or or maybe they are hanging out in a different way where um, we did something early in the pandemic where we took a battleship game and we dropped half of it off at one child's house, half of it off at another child's house. And then the two kids would meet on Zoom and actually play battleship together like they were sitting next to each other, even though they were sitting with the screen. So one of the things that in terms of having the social health in 2021, if you desire social health for you and your family, you've got to make it happen. 
and there's ways that you can do it. There's all sorts of different resources that are available online. There's social events happening all the time. We're very lucky to live in Santa Clarita for those of you who are in Santa Clarita. Um, I think when I think about our library system, just last week, I signed up for a bingo online. Um, I signed up for, I'm not sure if any of you love The Office. I love The Office. I've seen every single episode probably 10 times each. And um, they're having an office um, an office trivia night and people can sign up for that. So there's so many ways to do it. I love here too, Wendy in the chat put something that I think is so important, making actual phone calls instead of texting or email. I love that, Wendy, making actual phone calls, writing actual letters, redefining what that connectivity is for you and your family. Um, I did something that I haven't done in years. I made my kids write thank you notes after they received Christmas presents. And that should be something we do every year, but it wasn't something that we always invested time in. So it was really wonderful this year to suddenly reframe it and go, wow, this is something now we value. Now, I wanna ask you here, there's specific things that we need to be checking in with as well. For instance, when we're talking to our friends and family, who have you talked to today? And let's ask that, let's be explicit. You know why I asked that question? My mom is 86, as I have mentioned to you. And um, I have three older sisters. We all live in Santa Clarita. We all try to visit my mom as much as possible. Two are retired and two are working. So, you know, we try our best. Um, I go over at least once or twice a week, but there's seven days in a week and there's only four of us. And one day I called my mom and her voice was really cracking on the phone, almost to the point where I thought she was sick. And I said, mom, are you doing okay? And she goes, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. I just realized I sound so weird because I haven't spoken to anybody in five days. And as the daughter of that beautiful woman, my heart broke, right? Because I realized, wow, man, five days, no human connection on the phone or anything, that's not okay. And my mom's not online, so she's not having a virtual social experience. So I love that Wendy talked about, um, talked about specifically making those phone calls. Who have you talked to today? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. We need to ask our spouse or our partner. We need to ask our moms and our dads and our kids. I have underlined the questions on this slide because these are questions I want you to start asking daily. It's so important. Um, Catherine, I'm so relieved that she was um, truthful as well. Um, I want to note, I always watch the chat box. So if anybody wants to communicate via chat, please know that, um, please know I'm always happy to do that. And um, I do make references to it. So if at any point you're interested, just pull up your chat box and, and you'll see what people are talking about there. I also have here noted that social health needs to be a top priority. What is your social schedule? And I don't know about you guys, I haven't had much of a social session schedule. I'm not going to lie, but we do have one family that we quarantined with. It's my best friend who I used to teach kindergarten with, and she's our kids get along beautifully. Our spouses get along beautifully. You're going to see pictures of them in this presentation later on. And we were so lucky because we quarantined together from the very start and really minimalized all our other contacts. And so what is your social schedule? My social schedule every weekend is I get a chance to see uh, my good friends and we do something outside. And it can be like um, when things were really bad with the pandemic, we met at Central Park and we did, we did. everybody had their own toys and nobody crossed at all and everybody had masks and gloves and did whatever we had to do. Um, but what is your social schedule? It could be your social schedule is you're gonna walk on the beach down in Ventura and you're gonna say hi to five people you don't know. It could be that your social schedule is with other people, or it could be that you're taking yourself or your family to a place where you know there's going to be some opportunity to socialize. Um, you know, back in how, when times were before pandemic, it wasn't an issue. You just walk out on the street and there was always something going on. Santa Clarita, we always had events every weekend. Um, now things are a little different. So we have to actively be looking to make sure that our social health is good. Another final question here, are you in a rut? Is somebody in your family in a rut? Is a friend in a rut? So then we need to break it down day by day. Instead of saying, what's next weekend, which feels very far away when you're in a rut, you say, so what's your plan for today? Who are you going to talk to today? Are you gonna write a letter today? Are you going to FaceTime? Are you going to do it tomorrow? 
but you want to make sure that that's part of your script and that's something that you're asking because we want to make sure that that socializing is happening in order to have good social health you have to have relationships um, they're really the key let's talk a little bit here about social emotional health and i like this visual because it talks about kind of the different areas that you need to consider when it comes to this one thing that comes uh, from social emotional health that is so important that people don't always realize is it's about relationships and it's about emotions yeah but the truth is to or not the truth but to me the biggest piece of it is the reactions and so a lot of times we'll talk about um you know does a child have regulation techniques do they know how to self-regulate or to calm themselves down or things like that and um and i shouldn't even just say children <laughs> because it's adults too. Um, people don't always have the strongest social emotional health and they don't always know how to taper their reactions to the situations. Um, so this is like this visual I think is really good because it reminds us of the key components of the social and emotional learning that we do. We need to understand how to manage our emotions. We need to understand how to manage our behaviors, how to set goals. We need to understand the values and the strengths and challenges we also want to engage in responsible decision making. We want to make sure that we've got strong relationship skills and we want to make sure that we have a social awareness. Um, if you're struggling right now with your social emotional health, come up with a project to give back to somebody else in this world and you will make yourself feel better. So, um, you know, social emotional learning can definitely be a challenge and social emotional health is a place that people struggle with, but it doesn't have to be but you do have to actively take the time to make those communicate to make that communication and make that investment in your how you feel and your emotions um martha i really appreciate that you are at college of the canyons and um you're a student in early childhood education that's fantastic um, martha i used to be the department chair <laughs> so that is awesome i love the the early childhood department there it's a great group of people Okay, let's talk a bit about physical health. And I mentioned earlier that I was going to share a slide that had some of my, uh, my, my, my buddies on. And this slide here is one I wanted to share with you. First of all, when we come to our physical well being, it's all about the proper functioning of the body and the individual. It really is kind of like um, the mechanics of how things work. When it comes to physical health, my biggest words of advice right now are to get outside because so much is opening, it's really exciting. Um, we're gonna start seeing our libraries open. We're gonna see, start seeing HOA pools open. Right now, the BMX bike park that's brand new in Santa Clarita is opening. Um, if you don't follow the Santa Clarita city and the Santa Clarita library online, I highly suggest you do. Every time the city posts that they're getting the ice station ready and they're putting the new paint on and they're showing the process, it's getting us excited to let us know that there's a future and that there's things that we're gonna be able to do that we haven't been able to do in a long time. And so let's celebrate in that. Um, and also one thing to note, going outside, it doesn't have to always be great weather. I've always wondered why people feel like it has to be fantastic weather. It doesn't. I went to the beach um, last week right after it rained. It was beautiful. On the drive from Santa Barbara back to Santa Clarita, we saw 10 different rainbows and it was just because we decided to go on a day it had been raining. Yeah, maybe I wasn't like, you know, bodyboarding in the ocean or anything, um, you know, or body surfing, but at least I was able to walk on the sand and feel it in my toes and breathe the air and go for a walk and just enjoy it. So it's so important that we really make ourselves get out there. In Santa Clarita, we've got community gardens. We've got golf courses. We have horseback riding. You look into Acton, there's all sorts of different places. Um, we have pickleball, tennis courts, walking trails, archery, all sorts of things. We're going to see things open more and more. And one of the things to note, if you are a parent and you've got children and they don't wanna to go to these places, it's because it's like we're gonna to have to teach them again that it's okay to do these things that they haven't done for the last year. So it might sound kind of silly, but I love this visual of um, the picture of the three children and the one adult, and they're all doing their bike riding together on the Santa Clarita bike trails, because that dad is modeling healthy physical activity with his kids. He's not just taking them somewhere and dropping them off. He's like, okay, everybody get your helmets on, get your gloves, get your mask or whatever, we're gonna ride. And then they all jump on and ride. Um, and now, not all of us can not all of us can ride. 
Um, you know, so do what you can do, you know, walk, run, ride, go in the ocean, whatever you can do. Um, oh, I love this. Wendy said that they just uh, went to Vasquez Rocks for the first time a couple of weeks ago. How fantastic. And imagine like climbing on the rocks and the textures of your hands and the smell of everything. And it must have been um, really healthy, really healthy. I love that Catherine also says too, her husband and sons love archery. I love that. We'd love to have the, the dirt road paved to the archery range. That's awesome. <laughs> so they're going to work with DWP on that. That's fantastic. But there's all sorts of ways that we can get out and get moving and do what you can do. You know, I'm not sure about you guys, but I always start the new year and sometimes I pressure myself so much like, okay, you're going to work out a minimum of five days and this and this and this many minutes and, you know, like it's never enough. And so 2021, I totally changed totally changed my rationale on this. My goal now for exercise is 10 minutes, three times a week. And while that might not sound like much, here's what it is. It's a goal I can successfully accomplish every week and feel good about. And as long as my body is moving, why am I judging myself? So I want to throw that out to you. Oh, I love this. Jennifer just said, are there any drive-in um, theaters in the area? Not yet, not yet, okay? But we do have some in San Fernando Valley, which I know feels like it's really far, but it's really not that bad. We have had Castaic um, Lake has held a couple movies, um, but I think it was more in fall. But maybe this is something that we could try to get going in some of our parks in town or some other areas. You know, I remember when I used to go to the dive-in movie at the Aquatic Center, <laughs> uh, my kids and I would do that where they'd play it on the big screen and you could go in the pool. And so maybe we could talk to our city about having more opportunities for viewing movies outside if that's something that, are, that we want, right? This is about asking, right? This is a time where things are new and things are different and can't hurt to ask for things, right? Um, I love something too about physical health that I wanna share and it's called choice boards. And this is something because I'm a mom and um, a lot of times when my kids are on Zoom, um, it can be really, really long and taxing. And so what happens is they'll have these like little breaks in the school day, except they're both in high school. So most of the time they go straight to doing more work during their breaks. And what I've tried to share with them is that is not healthy. It's imperative that we all take breaks. So these on this, um, on this screen right now are some examples of something called choice boards. And these choice boards are specifically related to physical activities. They have these all over the internet. They're, most of them are free. You can find them for all ages. It's absolutely fantastic. It is a tangible, visible representation that you can print and like put on the wall to remind your child or to remind yourself of stuff to do. Um, I love this. When you look on the right-hand side, these brain breaks, the cross crawl and the owl, and these, some of these are hard. Double, uh, the double doodle drawing with hands at both times in the mirror, arm activation, holding one arm to your ear, exhaling where you're, uh, very specific things, but they're really good physical tasks that are getting you to move your body, getting you to breathe, getting you to engage. On the left-hand side, this is a version that's made for elementary school children. Jump back and forth over an imaginary line 40 times. Um, do 20 squats and 10 push-ups. Touch your toes 30 times. They're, excuse me, really tangible things that our kids can be doing. I would suggest that you print up choice boards for your kids and have them mark off two things a day that they do as breaks while they're Zooming because you're encouraging the physicality um, of those in-between breaks and that's something we wanna do. For those of you also with younger children, I wanna let you know that there are choice boards that are um, like made for kids who aren't verbal yet and who can't read yet. And so if you, and there's choice boards with pictures and all sorts of things. So if this is something that interests you, definitely check it out online and see what you can find because there's all sorts of um, resources that are available with this that are really, really healthy and really good. I also wanna backtrack for just a minute about physical health and talk about really some key essential pieces that pre-pandemic we might not have spent much time talking about, but I wanna mention them today. Um, and it might sound really, really simple, but I had one day when one of my kids was so cranky and they were so cranky that I was getting to the point that I was worried that maybe they were getting sick. And so it was probably, gosh, probably not until about two o'clock we were sitting there and I said, hey, gosh, 
you know, how are you feeling? Do you think we need to take your temperature or what's going on? And my child looks at me and says, you know, mom, I'm really hungry. I haven't eaten today. So as simple as this is gonna sound, please make sure you and your family are eating regularly. And you wanna make sure that you're trying to have healthy meals as much as possible. Ideally, um, you know, set a goal in 2021 that, that's realistic for your family. For my family, our goal was we will eat one meal together a day at the kitchen table. For some families, they eat three meals a day at the kitchen table, and that is fantastic. Um, but make your goal something that's going to be realistic for you. Our family, we've committed to eating one meal a day. We eat almost every breakfast together unless one of us, unless I have like an early morning meeting, which happens every once in a while where I've got to be on at seven or 7.30. But otherwise we sit down, we eat breakfast together. And we also take time to tell one, at least one thing that we're grateful for. And I will tell you one thing I'm grateful for right now. Every day that we sit down at the table, it has become such part of what we do that I no longer even have to say, hey, what are you grateful for? And I rarely start it myself. Often my son, Zach, starts it. And he, um, it's really been really great because in the pandemic, he's been able to find all things that he's grateful for that he might not have recognized um, any gratitude towards earlier um, or pre-pandemic. That's kind of special right there. I'm always looking for the silver linings in our experiences in life because we could choose to emphasize the deficit or we could choose to kind of look at the assets. And so I tend to look at the assets in this world. In addition to eating regularly, something else that we should be doing is drinking water. And again, it sounds so incredibly easy, but it real or simple, but it isn't always. You can go through a whole day, especially if you're a coffee drinker and you can realize that you've had six cups of coffee and not one cup of water. And it's not healthy for our bodies. I literally, I got, my, my niece got one of these cool coffee cup or cool Starbucks cups for my daughter and my daughter let me have it. I fill it up every day, usually two or three times a day and keep it next to me as I'm in my meetings. And then I know by the end of the day, I've had a solid, you know, 40, 60 ounces of water already. One of my kids, um, she's uh, um, in a ninth grade, as I mentioned, and she has a hydro fat flask that's a 40 ounce one. She fills that up with ice and water at the beginning of the morning. And her goal is to have it completely done by the time she is done with her school for the day. And I think that's a really, really solid, um, just keep that water going. It's so important. You know, one of the ways to get out of the rut is to, or like if you have a rut in the morning, um, have a big glass of ice cold water. It can jar you in a really positive way, um, get you going in the right direction. Another thing I wanna talk about for our physical health, um, which I normally wouldn't mention at all, but I'm gonna mention today, vitamins. Make sure that you are on a vitamin um, schedule and that your family is. This is a great time to be taking a little bit of extra C, maybe a little extra D, a little B, you know, whatever your healthcare provider says is what your family needs. Um, our family's been taking a little bit of zinc and some iron, just a couple extra things to make sure everything's okay right now. Um, in addition to eating well, drinking water, and having our vitamins, move every day. And maybe it's not everything, but do something. One of the things I want to share with everybody that I think is so awesome is over the Castaic Sports Complex, they actually have a track that has different activities you can do as you walk the track, or you can just walk on the track. And right when you get there, it literally says this track is like 1,063 steps. So every time you go around, add that together. And so um, I think that's really fun because it's so tangible for me. Um, my kids, of course, love to wear like an Apple Watch or, um, or, um, Oh my goodness, I forgot the name of that other, oh, the Fitbit, a Fitbit where you can count your steps, but you can also go to places and just physically count them, which is a lot of fun. And especially for anybody who's got little kids, that's healthy as well. One other physical aspect that I want to mention to you is, um, I love it. Martha's daughter just got the 64 ounce drinking water. Excellent. Keep it up. That's awesome. One of the other things I want to mention though to everybody that's so imperative and we don't, we don't give it enough um, importance is sleep. I know it seems like we've been home for like a year. So it seems like we've all probably caught up on sleep, but we need to keep that consistency. So for those of you who've got newborns and infants, they should be sleeping like 12 to 17 hours a day. For those of you who have toddlers and preschool children. So we're talking like ages, like two to about like five. Two. We're really, those, ch those children should be sleeping at least 11 hours a day, but more realistically up to 14 hours a day. Now let's talk about school age. So like TK up until like sixth, seventh grade, those children should be sleeping nine to 11 hours a day. 
How about those of you with high school students? I know my high schoolers think that they can sleep maybe like six hours, not even close. They need a minimum of seven to nine hours a day to be physically healthy. Even us, I know many of us when we're stressed at work, we'll wake up or we'll only sleep two, three hours or five hours. It's not healthy. Even we need seven to nine hours a day. And so, um, and even for older adults, as you get into the 65 plus category, I turned 47 this weekend. Um, so not quite there yet, but even at 65, you're looking at seven to eight hours per day. When we look at sleep, we look at having a set schedule for food. We have a, you know, opportunities for movement every day. We're drinking water. We're drink, We're having our vitamins. We are setting up our families for success. It might seem the simplest of things, um, but it really, really can be so important. Thanks so much for the birthday shout out. It was just this weekend. It was awesome. I'm feeling like 47 is going to be really good. Okay, let's talk for a bit about mental health. I really like this visual because it talks about some of the things that we've just talked about, but it also gives some other ideas. So if you look at the bottom on the left-hand side, it says avoid burnout, get some fresh air, eat well, exercise. I know these are things, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but we have to remind ourselves of these. Also, if anybody's interested, when the presentation's done, I'll provide my email and I'm happy to share these slides with anybody who's interested. We also um, record the workshop and it'll be up on the Defy It YouTube site. And so if you ever wanna watch it again, it will be accessible, but we're always happy to share information. On the right-hand side of this visual, it also talks about staying connected with people. And I love, I love this visual, and I'm sure many of you will crack up when you look at this closely. The person is on the computer. She is literally sitting on a stack of toilet paper, and it says, whoa, you have pasta? And she's like, oh, yeah, I even have toilet paper. I just think that's funny because that just goes to show what's happened this past year. Um, I like these other comments that are shared on this visual, though, that I think are really important. This one myself is something that I need to remind, remind myself of all the time. Limit the news and be careful for what you read. Um, I'm not sure about you, but I sometimes go down news rabbit holes and it can be to places that are just not healthy. And so I now um, pick and choose my news. I make sure I have balanced news sources because I, I don't wanna be only seeing what's happening on one side. I really wanna make sure I know what's happening in the world, but I don't keep my news feed on 24 seven. I used to keep the news on downstairs on the TV. I don't do that any longer because I don't want my kids to be stressed out by the news. And so we really got to pick and choose and make sure that what we are sharing with the children in our lives is developmentally appropriate. Um, I think it's so important. Um, I love this too. Catherine also said, I, nar I narrowed down my Facebook friends to mostly just family. That's helped me with social media. I think that's really good because we have to balance that social media. You want to be on, you want to be connected. But if you wake up at three in the morning and the first thing you do is look at your phone, that's when you got to check yourself. So it's like you just kind of have to keep it the ebb and flow of it. I like on the right hand side, it reminds us to wash our hands, but not excessively. Um, you will see that some people are doing it excessively right now or only using antibacterial soap and their hands are cracking and bloody. And so you want to make sure if you have somebody in your family that's showing that they're anxious and over washing their hands or over showering or anything like that, that you help them to come to a balance. I really like this middle, um, the middle visual too here where it says, have breaks, mute things. If something is triggering, allow yourself to leave. Um, I think that's one of those things. We have permission to be mentally healthy. And so if something is making us not healthy, move away from it. And that could be, um, you know, that could be something where you, you need a break. It could be something you ran into a situation. It could be a relationship or a friendship that has become toxic that you now need to get rid of. Um, I wish I would have learned that earlier in life. Um, I really didn't learn that till like in my forties and man, life is so much better when you have good people around you and you get the bad, you know, the negative people out as much as possible. I love it. I see some thumbs ups. Um, another thing when it comes to mental health that we need to really be thinking about is Anxiety is at an all time high. Anxiety for us, anxiety for children, anxiety all over the place. And so I love this visual because when we're talking about our mental health, this just reminds us of little things, you know, um, practicing self care, having reminding kids that they can talk to us when they're worried about something, 
man, I will tell you when I'm freaked out about something, if I can just sit and talk it through with somebody, it's like, I'm like floating. Cause when I'm all freaked out the moment I talk to somebody, I become grounded. I become centered, I become logical, I become like I'm back. And so if you've got a child, if you've got a friend and you're fe feeling that anxiety, you can often see anxiety with people too. It can be that they're tapping their foot or shaking their leg or um, you, know, you just kind of see it. Um, ask, do you wanna talk? And just open it up and see what people say. There's another piece on here um, on the left-hand side on the, on the blue section that says for kids. I love that it says reassure them that they are safe. It has been a really, really rough year. Um, many of us have lost friends. We've lost family. Um, we've, had, we've known people who have been sick. We know people who have survived and come back after being very, very sick but we need to reassure the children in our lives that they are safe, um, especially right now where things are looking good. We've got the vaccine. If you have a kid who's really freaked out right now, drive them by Magic Mountain and show them all the people getting their vaccinations and tell them that our turn will be coming up soon. You know, explain to them that the, who gets the first vaccinations and, and what the process is. And, you know, let, if we talk to kids, you know, in a way that's kid friendly, um, it's going to help them. It's really going to help them. I also really like the, the um, green box at the bottom here. And this is something I want to mention. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later as well. When you're talking about isolation and quarantine, it's, and, and honestly, just life in general, you know, things have gotten kind of off whack. So we now need to bring it back. Little things like, let's make sure that our self-care routines are happening. Let's make sure that the teenagers and the children that we live with and that our, our family, that they are taking showers every day or every other day, that they are brushing their teeth, brushing their hair. We had a little bit of a challenge in my house where there was a couple of days where one of my kids was just like rolling out of bed and trying to go to class. And I'm like, are you even brushing your teeth? And it, we had to like pull back and say, okay, well, it looks like you need more time in the morning or maybe take a shower at night or, you know, just making sure that they're engaging in healthy behaviors. If you, you know, during the pandemic, the sense of time gets so off that sometimes people don't remember if they took a shower or not. And so if you have a person in your life who's having a hard time with that, it could even be a senior, it doesn't even have to be somebody young, um, a checklist or something like that would be really, really helpful. Um, Oh my gosh, I appreciate Nikki sharing something here that as a parent, this is so stressful. Uh, my son had an assignment from school where he had to watch CNN. Totally stressed him out. Had to have a chat with the school. I, I appreciate that you saying that because our schools, they're, I'm a teacher, I have been my whole life. They're trying so hard. They want education to be relevant and social emotional and meeting all the kids needs. And you know, a teacher might think this is the best assignment for this child or the, the class to learn this. And if it's not right for your child right now, absolutely be in contact. We're all trying to figure this out. Educators, parents, we're all trying to figure this out. As I said before, lead with kindness and grace, right? <laughs> because if the teacher finds out, oh my gosh, that totally stressed out one kid, guess what? As an educator, then I know if I've got 30 kids in my class, that one kid probably represents four to 10 children in my class in terms of them getting stressed. So it's so important, so important. Um, Martha, your relaxed time is Zoom meetings. I love it. This is my fourth for today. <laughs> I love it. I am a Zoom sister as well. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. I also wanna share on the right-hand side, I really like this, um, this visual because I think this is important for anybody who's got children who are younger or who maybe you know don't like to read or whatnot, when you feel anxious, here's a visual. This is the kind of thing you wanna print and have it be in a room um, or print and have it on the refrigerator if you're the person who's feeling the anxiety. Go outside, I don't care if it's raining, it's gonna rain the next couple of days. Guess what, if you're feeling anxious and you step outside in the rain, it's like one of the best things you can do if you're having anxiety and you need to make sure that you need some help with your mental health right now, one of the best things you can do is to ground yourself. Think about your five senses. 
Think about what can I touch? What can I smell? What can I taste? What can I hear? What can I see? And once you go through that, like say for instance, you're feeling anxious, you step outside and it's raining. You can smell the rain. You can feel the water. You can hear the raindrops. You go through that process, either yourself or with children. And I will tell you, by the time you are done, you can breathe again. The anxiety goes down. So I really love this. How do you, you know, when you're feeling anxious, what are some of the things you can do? We need to help people with that 24 seven right now, drinking some water, listening to some music. Oh, my husband did the best thing for my birthday. He pulled out my old record player and like a hundred albums. So we are in this whole other mode of listening to music right now. I introduced my children to Led Zeppelin this weekend. It was quite exciting. <laughs> um, but it's really important that we want to, um, I love it here, have a positive distraction because that's a good way to move from anxiety to a place of health, to be distracted. Um, if you ever attend my, I do a workshop on um, positive discipline with young children. I talk about distraction as one of the best strategies when working with children as well. Okay, this one, this visual is something I wanted to share with you for one thing, two things in particular. The third bullet point here says, when you're managing stress during a pandemic, because managing stress is what we have to do to have good well-being in 2021, one of the things it says is to pay attention to your body, recognize the early warning signs of stress, and I love this suggestion. Take time to renew your spirit. Renew your spirit through medica meditation, prayer or helping others in need. I can promise you, um, if you're a person of prayer, fantastic. If you're a person who loves to meditate, fantastic. If you're a person who doesn't fit into those two categories and you don't know what to do, help someone. It can be helping an individual person. It can be cleaning out your pantry and dropping off food at the Newhall Food Pantry, which has a 24 seven drop slot. So if you're having a rough weekend and you don't feel good, give a donation because there's people in our town who don't have food and we can help them. And so I love this because it just reminds us we've got to all find something and we have to be able to help our kids to find that something too. I also wanted to share this slide in particular because it's got resources, you know, new year, new you. I hope you feel good. I hope you get strategies after tonight. I hope you're like pumped up to make this a good year. Do something different physically. Make sure you're checking your mental health, but guess what? If you wake up and you have a really, really rotten day, there's people who want to talk to you because you're valid and you're important and we want you here. I also wanna share with you, I'm so proud of the Heart District. Just this week, they emailed out a new resource that there's a talk line that people can contact somebody at any moment if they're in mental distress. And it's not a random number that's removed. It's something that's in our community that is created to help our children and our families. It's a beautiful thing. Good job, Heart District. Very pleased with that, you know? Um, I also wanna talk to you about something, a tool to support mental health. And I have some of these nearby. Um, I actually shared some of these in a workshop in December uh, because I have had huge success with my own two children with fidgets during the pandemic. And it might seem like the simplest of things, but I'm gonna be really honest. Um, on the left-hand side is a pack that I bought from Amazon. It's a, just a stock picture, but you can get them for all sorts of different prices, depending on what you wanna do or how much you have the ability to spend. If you do have the ability to spend, actually, before I even talk about Amazon, I wanna keep it real. If you've got $1, go to the 99 cent store because they sell these fidgets and they look like the silliest of things. They're just these little rubber things but the kids love them. They can tie them, they can twist them. They, they're very hard to break. If you have a kid who has anxiety, you can sit and do this the whole time that you're on your Zoom and you might not even know that the person's doing it. Another great thing about these ones from the 99 cent store, when they get dirty, you literally wash them with soap and water, dry them off, they're good, they're brand new. If you um, can't find this one or you wanna order more, um, I do love that pack on the left from, um, <laughs> um, to uh, that pack on the left we have from Amazon. There's some really great ones in there. This is one of my favorite fidgets. This is absolutely something that supports our mental health for people of all ages. This one is a little mesh one that's got a marble in the middle and all you do is you push it back and forth. That's all you do. Isn't that so simple? These are great. They sell like 20 of these for 10 bucks. These are a really good one. I also love this fidget. I hope everybody can see this one. Um, 
I'm gonna move this up so I can hopefully see it a little better. Okay, this is a little like pea pods, right? And there's three peas in here and the kids just push them out. That's all they do. It seems ridiculous, doesn't it? Guess what? You sit here and do this and then you focus in class. When your body's, like when you need to get that energy out, if you can get it out in a way, then that's gonna help you focus. It's gonna help you ground. ground. It's gonna help you feel good. My daughter wanted me to share this one with you. It's actually in the picture on the left. This is a little clicker. It's got all these different little buttons and things. And all you do is you just, you just touch it and play with it. Um, there's one in the middle that I wanna share with you too. I bought a two pack of these that were about $15 worth every penny. It is, um, do you guys know when you get like a package from Amazon or something and you've got the bubble wrap? Imagine bubble wrap that you can just keep popping over and over and over and over. You just pop it and then when you're done, you move it to the other side and you can wash it with soap and water, same thing. Um, they come in high fives, they come in circles, they come in all sorts of things. I will tell you, I wish I would have bought one for myself because there's so many times when I'm sitting in long meetings where I just wanna be playing with something like this. So this is a great, great, great tool to really support mental health. My son also wanted to share, uh, wanted me to share his favorite. And this is another item from 99 cent store slash Dollar Tree, both of them carry them. Silly putty, this is taking it old school everybody, but guess what? For my 14 year old, this little thing here, it's what feels good to him. It's what keeps him focused in class. It's what makes him feel good when he's got a long day of education. And so give it a shot. Um, nice thing about Silly Putty, 99 cents or a dollar. So it's easy to replace if you want to. Um, I wanna share two others. One of these is actually on the visual as well. And it is, I'm hoping that you can see this okay. Let me do it like this actually, let's see. This is a kinetic one. Do you see how cool that is? And so you just spin it and then you just wait. And as it goes slower and slower and slower, it's something that's really relaxing, really relaxing. Um, I told my daughter that I was gonna be sharing these with you. And she actually said, oh, you've got to show them my favorite one, which I think this is gonna make every parent who's on right now crack up because in true child way, how it goes. She has all these cool fidgets, right? She says, this one's my favorite. I hope everybody can see this. It's a rock from the beach. And this one is my daughter's favorite because she says, I love this rock because the holes fit my fingers and they feel it feels good when I touch it. So all she does is she plays with this. She holds it almost like a wishing rock. You know, she'll put her fingers in the groove. And most importantly, she feels relaxed from it because that is the intention of this. So these fidgets here, you know, I think they got a bad rap a couple of years ago with those spinners because they got really obnoxious. We all know, anybody who had spinners knows what I'm talking about. Um, but really fidgets are tools. They are tools to help curb anxiety and they are tools to promote mental health and well-being. Um, I love this too. Oh, that's great, Catherine. She said, um, bubble wrap is great. A child psychologist said, suggested that this goes in my child's anger box. Oh, I love that you just said anger box. When I was a kindergarten teacher, I used to have um, something kind of similar. I had a space in my classroom that when kids were angry, they were allowed to go over to the space. And in the space, there were pillows that they could punch. There were papers that they could crumble and rip and shred. And there were all these things that they could do if they were angry and they needed to get some of that anger out. So I love that you just said an anger box with some bubble wrap. That is perfect. Another great thing in an anger box is put some um, big paint brushes and can just like, you know, like old little containers or something, have a child or even a per an older person go outside with those, um, just put water in the containers. And then you can simultaneously paint with your left and right hand at the same time. It's actually really, really good for mental health and well being. It makes you kind of cross your right and left brain and it really will help to center the person. The best thing about it is when you paint with water, there's zero cleanup. So you have them paint with water outside, on the walls, on the concrete, whatever, and there's zero cleanup involved. And you will see the person get um, less stressed from just doing that simple activity. Um, I wanted to go into some general ideas on well being in 2021. And this visual is really like my favorite of the entire, um, the entire PowerPoint here, because it really brings together, it's got the concept of mental, the concept of physical, and the concept of social. 
and it brings them all together and it talks about the different areas in each of those, which we've already talked about most of these today. But when we look at these crossovers of the Venn diagram, we look at the self-care in the middle. We look at this idea of having a constant bed, bedtime routine with a relaxing activity for 30 minutes before you go to bed. I am guilty of not doing that. I'm not sure if any other parents are as well. I think I can go from being like totally on to just going straight to sleep and then I end up not being successful. So I need to take my own advice here and start coming up with a relaxation 30 minutes. Um, another thing here too, the taking the break from scrolling, probably that's my problem right there. I gotta be honest, is just really unplugging and doing something for you. Um, one of the things that we've got, we'd started doing during the pandemic that we haven't done for a while is we now take baths. We take relaxing baths and my husband will bring a candle or we have all these nice bubbles and soaps and just, you know, it's like now become this really calming place and a calming activity we do. Um, going back here to that self-care in the middle and where the um, Venn diagrams come together, I just want to note the concept of the doing random acts of kindness. Now, I know many people in our town do this. I've had the chance to be booed during Halloween. Um, I've had all sorts of things over the pandemic where, you know, we had the sisters, I forgot what the sisters of the traveling pants and, you know, just all sorts of things that make a difference. Do a random act of kindness. One of my friends sent me a letter that just, it was a card that just said, hey, I am so glad that we've had the chance to spend time during this pandemic. And it was like one of those things where I got it, it made my day, I keep it in my office and it reminds me, it reminds me of the good. And so when I'm having a day or a moment where I feel like I'm in the bad, I have a tangible, physical reminder of the good. And that's such a healthy thing to have. You know, those random acts of kindness are a great, great thing to partake in. I um, also want to talk for a little bit about mental health and how it looks differently depending on the age. You know, one of the things that we need to take into account is when we're promoting these mindful techniques, they, they might look different if a person is younger or if a person's a teenager or if a person is older. You know, we want to make sure that we're promoting ways that people can self-soothe. And so, you know, I mentioned already <clears throat> that you can ground through your five senses. Another thing that you might see, depending on the age of the person, they may want to do some tapping, something like tapping to just get them grounded and to get them joining us again. It could be that the person has a mantra or something that they say in the mirror over and over and over until they feel better. It could be that they're doing a breathing technique and maybe they're taking deep breaths to 10 and exhaling slowly or something to that effect. But you need to make sure that whatever strategies you use, they're meeting the person where they are and at the age that they are. So I wanted to share this visual with you because I think this is so tangible that the left-hand side is for younger kids and the right-hand side is made for teenagers or for older people. And I think it's really important. This one says stressed out students mini guide, but I think those are like teenagers or college students. Hey, guess what college student? You got to rest. You've got to exfoliate your face and drink water. <laughs> you know, you've got to stay clean. You've got to take a shower. Um, watch for that. Watch for that right now, especially anybody who's got teens, be, be on the lookout for that. That's something that can be missed sometimes. Um, and when we look at the kids, we look at this and we say, okay, I need to set, away, set some time so my child can journal or they can draw or they can have a diary. I want them to have an interest. I want them to have a hobby. I want them to have a social group. You know, we need to make sure that our kids feel like they belong to something, um, you know, and it might not be everything right now. We're in a pandemic. Grace, kindness, keep saying that to yourself over and over. But um, we need to make sure that we help to give those tools. And most importantly, new year, new year, new year, new you 2021. Let's model what's healthy. Let's model it for our children. Let's model it for our spouses and partners and our friends. Um, let's model what it's what we need you know I, I love this one here on the right too if you feel sad cry how about we allow for our expressions how about if we see somebody struggling we reach out to help you know we really need to we're in a unique time i know i keep saying it over and over um look for signs and don't ignore them it's essential that we are all on top of it right now and we're always looking and if something seems off 
ask somebody, ask for help. Um, we want to make sure that we um, meet people where they are during the pandemic. Honestly, always, not even just today. I love this one too. This I think is a great suggestion. I really hope people will um, take a screenshot of this or shoot me an email asking for the slides because to me, this is like a checkoff list. And I wanted to share one of my favorite pictures that came out this week. Um, on the right-hand side, this is the same family I shared earlier that does the BMXing, was, they were doing the BMX bikes um, in that other picture. And so this is a family that um, decided it would be fun to do ping pong. They didn't have a ping pong table. I think they tried to buy one on one of the um, Facebook sites and they weren't picked or something. You know how it's, you put interested in the next thing you know, it's not you. And so, but she didn't want to buy a new one. They didn't really have the space for it. And so guess what they did? They went on Amazon, they bought four paddles. Uh, it's a set, four paddles, the net and a, a box of um, ping pong balls. She said it cost $30. They pulled out their dining room table I love this. Attach this net to their dining room table. And now their family is doing ping pong competitions in this space in their house. And the best thing about it, you only have two people play at a time and they're a family of five. So they're interchanging. People are going in, going in, going out, going out, going out. It's exciting. It's new. And it's $30 what they spent on it. So look for something different. Look for something fun. I love here that this list has all sorts of ex examples. How about a dance party? How about a family bike ride? How about playing kickball or roller skating? If you don't know where to roller skate, guess what? Go to a tennis court. It's a fantastic, one of my, one of my dear friends roller skates all the time on our local tennis courts. And it always looks like so much fun. I love this too. It has the emotional category as well. Watch a good movie. I will tell you my family right now, we're in the Marvel universe. I, don't, I think we're on like movie 19. I don't even know. For any of you who are Marvel people, maybe you can explain it to me. We have now, we've gone past Endgame with the Avengers. <laughs> Anyways, it's this whole new land for me. We used to just go see the movies occasionally in the movie theaters. Now it's more like my, my kids are talking to me about the backstory and, you know, let's talk about Stan Lee and let's talk about the history. And it's this whole different thing. And I love it. Um, verbalize, talk about feelings. There's one here on the emotional list that I want to mention. Say, I love you. That is something that my family does so differently now. We used to say, I love you when we went to bed. That's what we used to do. Now we say, I love you. And I'm not exaggerating. I probably have, my son and I probably say, I love you to each other. Gosh, probably 10 to 20 times a day. My daughter probably says it like five to eight. My husband probably says it about 10 times a day. And so we went from saying this phrase once a day with just the four of us to now it is ingrained in our daily activities. So when everybody finishes breakfast and goes up to their Zooms for school or work, I love you, have a good one. Anytime I pop in during their Zoom meetings, hey, I love you, hope you're having a good day. Um, I try to bring little, little treats up to the kids. Um, sometimes we'll go through and get the free lunches. I hope you guys are taking advantage of that. Many of our schools in Santa Clarita have a lunch program. They're during the elementaries, uh, during the day, it's 11.30 to one. And the junior highs and high schools is from um, 12 to two. And it's Monday through Friday. It is something to do. I will tell you, this is gonna sound weird, but it's something to do. The kids love it. And they give you little snacks and little yummy things. And so sometimes I will bring in one of the snacks from the lunch, um, from the lunch program and in the middle of the day and bring it to the kids. And it's a big deal. So do things that might not seem like a big deal, but are a big deal. Um, I love too, on the bottom of this visual, it talks about the practical. This pandemic has been an opportunity to get to the practical. I'm hoping that your kids are helping with laundry or cleaning or dishes or taking out the trash. They should absolutely be having regular practical things that they're in charge of. If you are the person who is still cleaning your whole house, your, your whole house right now, this is 2021, new year, new you. Make everybody have some of the responsibilities and share it. You know, We're all in the space now a lot differently. There's more mess and so let's share it. Um, I love this. Shani also just mode, uh, put in the chat, Walmart has the ping pong, net, ping pong net set of paddles and three balls for 15. I know what I will be adding to my Walmart pickup this week. Thank you very much for enjoying, for saying that. I appreciate it. On the right-hand side too, under the social category, I love that it says to play board games. 
board games and puzzles have been like a lifeline for my family and my friends during the pandemic. Um, it just is so much fun if you can play Mastermind or, I mean, we've, I can't even tell you, we have found so many different games we've played and had an absolute blast doing it. So please check out this list and consider doing that. I also, real quick, before we go to the last, or close to the last slide, I wanna mention the spiritual part and having a gratitude list. I love that idea where you can talk about what you're grateful for, what you're thankful for, because every day we should be able to find something. And if you've got anybody in your family who's struggling to find something they're grateful for, that's a, a great indicator that you need some additional support and need some additional help. Um, you've always got to have hope. Remember that in this life, you always have to have hope. It's essential. Now, as we're getting ready to, to go to Q&A here, I do just want to share a couple more visuals as we're wrapping up, but I love that it's talking here on the left-hand side about the student self-care. And this is obviously for a little bit older because it's talking about medical, making sure you've got your flu shot, things like that. Um, but it also talks about these really important components of, you know, taking a digital de detox, you know, treating yourself to your favorite food. Um, we love a place called Waffle Love. It's a new place in Santa Clarita. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. It's a super nice treat. And if I take my kids there or we do a pickup from there, it is the biggest deal ever. So every once in a while, you know, do things that will just kind of kind of make them feel good. Um, I also want to talk about the self-care ideas on the right-hand side. And one thing, <laughs> one thing I want to share I love that it says, listen to that one song on repeat. And I hope other people will giggle when they see that too. For some of us, self-care can be listening to a song over and over just because it feels good. It could be looking at funny memes. I bet you some who have on right now were totally engaged in that Bernie meme that's gone everywhere and has been cracking people up. You know, that's, this is great. These self-care ideas remind us to laugh. They remind us to love. They remind us, I love this, forgive yourself for what you couldn't do today and resolve to try again tomorrow. 2021 is a new year. It is a new year, new you. It is not about guilt. It is not about feeling bad. It is about taking charge of your life. It is about feeling physically good, getting outside, whether, no matter what the weather is, you know, it's about really having social emotional health and making sure you have relationships and you have friends and you're engaging with people and you're talking as much as possible. It's also about really basic things like, you know, making sure that you're showering, making sure that you are doing everything that is needed to have a healthy, a healthy family and a healthy life. I love these, this last visual here because what it says here I think is so important. Social distancing, not emotional distancing. This is the time that we need each other. We need to be going to workshops and going out and doing things. And when you're walking on the street, um, if somebody's across the street and you're socially distant, say hi, you know, engage as much as possible. Um, communication, consistency, keeping busy, giving them power. I love the, the concepts that they have for kids on here. Really, when we are, and the message they have at the top, social distancing, not emotional distancing, you know, staying socially, physically, and mentally active, it's a choice. It's a conscious choice you make every day for you and your family. And so thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to have a chance to talk with you all about this. And, and with that, I think we are close to, we are right a few minutes after eight o'clock. And so with that, I'd like to open it up for questions. I have my email here, so I wanna be a resource to anybody who's on right now, but I'd love to open it up for some questions and some conversation. What would you guys like to talk about? What questions do you have? What concerns do you have? Anything going on with your child or children? I love when I see people I know. <laughs> Thanks for being here tonight. Awesome. Totally appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, excellent. I'm already getting some comments in the chat um, saying to, uh, one person asked me to send them the slides. I'm happy to do so. Um, I have some thanks in there as well. I'm absolutely, thank you so much for coming here tonight. I would love to open it up though. Any questions or comments or how are people doing? How is your kids doing? How's your family doing? How are things going? So I'm going to wait a minute. I'm going to get quiet and hopefully we'll have some people unmute and talk for a little bit. 
but also I don't want to have any, no stress on anybody. This is all about being a resource. So open up and talk if you'd like to. Um, but if not, it's also, it's also fine to stay quiet, whatever feels good for everybody.